Setting the segment benchmark is always a good thing and it is true in the case of the Royal Enfield Meteor 350. It is, in our opinion, the best 350cc class cruiser that you can buy. But the problem with being the best is that at some point or the other, there's someone who is going to come and challenge your position. Today, ESD's cruiser-style motorcycle, the Roadster, poses a threat to the Meteor. It is more powerful, it has a much different demeanor, and it costs roughly the same amount of cash. This is the case of two legendary brands with their most modern motorcycles yet going head to head. This is going to be interesting. Before you question why we've got the Roadster and Meteor 350 together for a comparison and not the classic 350, let's set things straight. The ESD is based on the Java platform, but with a more stretched out chassis that has a longer wheelbase and more relaxed steering geometry. Even just going by the looks, Classic Legends is trying to give this bike more of a cruisery appearance and that's why we decided to put it straight up against the cruiser rival from Royal Enfield. With that being said, these two bikes still take very different approaches. Their differences first of all are apparent in their approach to styling. The Meteor 350 has that typical cruiser stance and bits like the round headlights, the large fuel tank, pod-like LED taillight on the rear fender and the dual tone paint on the supernova variant are nice touches. Although the Meteor is the older bike here, it is quite the looker. Royal Enfield bowled us over with the design of the Meteor 350 when it launched the bike a couple of years ago. And I think that holds true even today. This motorcycle still manages to look very good and it has carved the identity of a cruiser in our minds. But speaking of identity, the ESD Roadster is sort of lost in this department. It looks a little bit like a Java 42 and that's understandable because the motorcycle is based largely on that Java 42, but I wish ESD had given some amount of distinction to the design and I'm not just talking about the badging on the tank or the furrower on the rear fender. That being said, the more time I spent looking at the Roadster, the more I began to like the way it looked. The small LED headlight, the way the fenders are shaped and the matte green color on a test bike are bits that I liked. But upon closer inspection, you begin to notice that the Classic Legends has quite a lot of ground to cover when it comes to quality and finish. The welds, for instance, are crude in places, the bolts look a little too basic, the switches aren't as tactile as those on the Meteor, and the fly screen ahead of the instrument cluster is mounted crooked. Also, the LCD display is next to impossible to read when the sun is overhead. And if you are the fussy kind, you won't like the fact that there's a separate key slot to lock the handlebar. The Meteor, on the other hand, showcases Royal Enfield's much longer experience and newfound levels of engineering in putting together motorcycles. These new J-Platform 350cc bikes in particular are a huge leap forward in terms of quality, fit and finish. However, the Royal Enfield also isn't free from niggles. The triple navigation system is buggy at times and the fuel gauge on the LCD fluctuates to random levels once below the halfway mark. Nevertheless, these are relatively minor issues. The Roadster's riding position feels like a cross between a cruiser and a street naked motorcycle. This wide handbar is pulled towards you which feels nice, but the foot peg is a little too high and rare set than ideal. In fact, the riding position is a little strange but not uncomfortable in any way. That being said, this seat is a little too soft, so even a 70 km ride will induce butt aches. The Roadster's bar and mirrors were another irritant. While they may look cool, they kept fouling with our hands, especially while negotiating tight turns. The rider on the Royal Field is going to be much more happier over the course of a long ride. Compared to the ESD, this riding position feels much more comfortable and natural, be it in the way this handlebar is placed or the positioning of the foot pegs. In fact, I remember riding a Meteor from Pune to Mangalore over the course of a single day and at the end of the ride, there was barely any fatigue or significant pains to speak of. There's no question then that the Meteor 350 nails that crucial bit about long distance, all day comfort. It's also more comfortable for taller riders who will find the SD seat to foot peg ratio quite cramped. That being said, the Roadster might not be 
as comfortable, but it will surely get you to your destination a lot quicker. What you see on paper is made apparent when you ride both these motorcycles. The ESD is head and shoulders above the Royal Enfield when it comes to acceleration as well as top speed. If you are the kind of rider who likes ringing the throttle to the stop, revving engines to high RPMs to extract the most from it, this liquid-cooled single-cylinder engine is the one that will keep you more entertained. Our test figures clearly show the wide gulf in performance between the two motorcycles. But all that performance advantage comes at the cost of fuel economy and considering the ESD's smaller tank and consequently lesser tank range, the rider on the Meteor won't be stopping of fuel as often. In fact, those riding the Meteor would hate stopping because the engine is so sublime, it makes you want to keep going on and on. It has a mild but characterful beat, there's a lot of torque from low down the rev range and there are barely any vibrations even at 100 kph. It's the engine's easy nature that in turn removes the stress from a long ride, if you don't mind travelling at a little more relaxed pace. Meteor's engine is the polar opposite to the rev happy but relatively rough ESD and it all boils down to how you like your engines. As for me, there were times when I enjoyed the ESD's peppy response and quick shifting gearbox, while on the other hand, the Meteor's engine and gearbox combo put me in an almost meditative state. And then there's the manner in which the Meteor negotiates corners. An area where the Meteor leaves an impressive streak is in the way it handles. The chassis is so well balanced and the front end is so communicative that all it takes is for you to go around a couple of corners to have complete faith in this motorcycle. The Meteor's tyres are quite grippy as well, but I wish when it comes to braking, there was slightly better bite at the front disc. The ESD won't throw any surprises around corners and in fact has better cornering clearance while remaining planted as well. The problem is, it lacks clarity. This motorcycle fails to establish the same sense of connection with the rider and this numb feeling from the front end accentuates the issue. That said, with its extra clearance, the ESD will still be able to pull away from the Meteor in the bends. It also pulls a point away from the Meteor by offering stronger and more reassuring braking. But where it can't hold a candle to the Meteor is ride quality. It isn't too harsh, but it isn't great at isolating you from bumps and undulations either. In fact, over the period of a long trip, the Meteor's relatively absorbent ride is bound to make you feel less tired. After spending considerable amount of time with these motorcycles, one thing is clear that they both bring their own unique motorcycling flavour to the table. And choosing between the two is largely going to depend on which one suits your palate. The ESD certainly has some rough edges that Classic Legends needs to iron out. But there are areas where the Roadster is quite enjoyable, especially if you largely care about riding the bike with more power and better performance. But the more time we spend with these two, the more the Meteor tugged at our heartstrings. It is more refined, feels more special in its design, quality and finish, and excels at offering a calm and relaxing ride. Not to mention the peace of mind that Royal Enfield's giant sales and service network offers. As far as price goes, the fully loaded Supernova variant of the Meteor that you see here, with its windscreen, backrest and dual tone colour scheme, costs about 20,000 more than the ESD. But the base Meteor, which is mechanically identical, is just 3,000 rupees more than the Hunter Green ESD we have here. Which variant you buy is a personal choice, but in a direct comparison, the Enfield was our pick of the two. Mm -hmm.